We're here today with Mark Thompson, Managing Director of Telgo Resources. Mark, thanks for your time. Cheers, Dave. Recently, the company achieved some high-grade results from its Cobalt project. Can you share some of those details? Yeah, Arm of Oma is uh, one of three projects that we've got with Cobalt, Copper and, and Gold in them. Um, Arm of Oma is particularly high-grade. Uh, it's a fairly early-stage uh, project. So we've been doing a program of reassaying and uh, doing some new drilling ourselves on, on different ones. The results at Arm of Oma that were very high-grade were reassaying, but we reassayed core that wasn't sampled before back in 04 and when you go back to the earlier drilling in the 80s a lot of material wasn't assayed so we've done that and we've discovered that the cobalt is much more extensive than previously thought in some of the other, some of the holes um, so so all three of our cobalt copper gold projects there are um, sort of getting advanced uh, as it were and uh, this was a, a technical um, success I guess you'd say with one of our new projects. And what is the value of these cobalt assets to your wider portfolio? Uh, good question. The, um, we've owned these since 2012 when we uh, took over Tex European assets, um, the Swedish assets, and uh, we've always really liked them. I particularly, to be honest, always put um, these very highly, these IOCG cobalt copper golds. So anyone that loves um, ore bodies um, just, just sees these rocks and, and sees their um, potential. Um, the fact that they're within striking distance of smelters, um, both in Sweden and in Finland, where currently you have cobalt being produced from uh, the African deposits, uh, there's a real development potential in these. And geologically, really high cobalt to copper ratios, and you get gold as a kicker as well. Metallurgically, we've discovered they're pretty, um, pretty good to work with. So it, it's a, it's a tantalising development story. How far we want to take it before we do something with it um, is, is yet to be determined. But what we're doing is trying to find out what, what could it be that we don't want it. It's not a cheap sort of sale. We've been nurturing it for a long time and we, uh, we're sort of preparing it for where it's going to go. And more recently, you've had some great battery success. Yeah, well, the battery results we've consistently been getting since we started working on anode materials in, in lithium-ion batteries. Um, in this case, we've done some work on our graphite previously, then we did work on our graphene, and now we've put them together, and we've mixed the graphite and the graphene together and have formed a, uh, a paste, as it were, which is what anodes are made from, um, and coated it onto battery material, made a battery that performs about 20% better in capacity and is super stable, like it barely drops any capacity over the cycles we've done over 1,200 hours of testing. So yeah, it's a, it's a high performance um, sort of product um, that uh, is enabled by our, our graphene being mixed with the graphite and provides a really short term, um, or so I should say near term, opportunity for those sorts of materials um, in our stage of development. And what is 20% mean in terms of a, a global discussion? Yeah, 20% 20, 20 uh, extra capacity means two things. Either you can have a battery that lasts, for example, 20% longer, or essentially you'd have a car that gives 20% more range, which is massive. And uh, if I could go off the range a little bit here, I personally feel that electric cars, the, the, the marketing wars that there will be in cars will be very much about range, because range anxiety is a, is a very big issue for people taking up electric cars. So the quality of the battery and how far things like a car can go, or a drill and all the other products, or something that's on a grid, the extra performance, which is actually higher than what you can get with theoretically pure graphite, um, is, uh, is an important selling point. And it means you've got a niche market and advantage, so you're not looking over your shoulder at just the latest prices coming out of China all the time. Um, you're, you're moving into downstream relationships with bigger manufacturers. Um, sorry, but to, to get back onto what it means then, you can have that high performance, but the other thing you can do is actually just have less weight. So you can actually have thinner or less anode material, match it up with the cathode, and you can actually have less material in a battery, which means it's, it weighs less, which in a way then can give you other benefits, including increased range also. What we're seeing is all of those things want innovations in batteries, where they're going. It's not about batteries of the last 20 years, which have been okay, but they've sort of reached their limits. and so to go to the next stage and get set for that, that's where we incorporate our materials. Um, and our materials are made differently, we've got a unique ore body, we process it differently, we're producing these particles that perform better. Uh, it's well known actually, it's well published why they perform better insofar as the way the lithium intercalates with this material. So um, it, it's well understood, but it's something that's not easily achievable for, for everyone because you've got to have that combination of factors. So yeah, we're setting ourselves up to be a, a, a part of that battery supply chain um, in the short term. So you've been constantly achieving fantastic results 
And I suspect now they're starting to, if not already, are getting the attention of external parties, be yeah. funders, potential battery manufacturers and the like. Yeah. How is that uh, interest growing? Yeah, it is. It's getting better. Obviously, we've been in the graphite biz, biz for a while, so a lot of the major groups that people know about we've had some sort of relationship with um, behind the scenes. on. But that's all been in, in normal ranges, I guess. Um, where we wanted to go, though, was, was this high-performance route and more involved, more downstream and grab more value. Those groups now are starting to pay attention. The results give you that, that you sort of prove your product. You, know, you take it that extra step and you're actually demonstrating the product rather than just meeting a spec. So uh, in some ways, it's the way we choose to do it. We, we, that's where we want to work um, compared to others. Um, in this case, we recruited uh, uh, Recruit R&D, which is this multinational group based out of Japan. And they've got some fantastic scientists that have got very extensive lithium-ion experience, especially with the market as well as the technical side. So they've, um, they actually approached us uh, based on some results we, that they saw and wanted to work with us on taking this stuff to market, not just in Asia, but also in Europe. So that was great. And secondly, I guess, is the UK government, the Faraday Challenge, which is this uh, multi-billion dollar effort by the UK government to look at the electrification of their vehicles. Um, in the Midlands, they employ about three quarters of a million people uh, in the current, current automotive industry. And all of that has to be converted from internal combustion engines to, to electric. And so a big chunk of that, the battery. So the government's got a program running for about just under a quarter of a billion pounds. Um, of funding available for innovative companies to make advances within Europe and predominantly, of course, in the UK um, to develop that. So our Cambridge-based facility, um, Dr. Sai Shivredi there and on our, our energy division has been working with some consortia that we've joined um, to apply for those funding. Some of the companies we've joined in those consortia are, um, some are small, some are big, some are uh, very uh, major players in the battery industry already and we're hoping to win some of those uh, heading into November when we can talk about them in more detail. So the battery results actually very quickly are already starting to, to pay off with the, the relationships and the economic pathways starting to open up for us that will create a lot more value for us than just being a pure raw material provider. And the nice thing is too, it's not necessarily the graphene and the really cutting edge of, of the graphene technology world, it actually is our graphites as well, um, which are, have got some unique characters. So it, it actually could still be a, a quite a large chunk of volume for us without stressing things out on the um, sort of technology and commercial side of the cutting edge. Great results to date, exciting times ahead. Mark, thanks for your time. Thanks, Dave. Cheers.